Uh, my turn. Pull this guy up. Get him like this. And just go. Mm -hmm. mm, really good. Nice. Coconut. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Guyana. Most people don't know much about the South American country. Or is it in the Caribbean? Guyana has some of the best food I've ever had. Today we're heading to Morocco by an indigenous village deep inside the rainforest. We're going to learn about their culture. And of course, we're eating everything they got. Breadfruit, quinches, cassava bread, barbecued chicken, piwari, and I'm even eating worms. Slimy, yet satisfying. Let's go to Morocco by Guyana. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from beautiful Morocco by Village, an indigenous village about a four hour journey from Georgetown. Today is gonna be super exciting. We started off really early, woke up at five in the morning. We drove one hour to Wash Clothes Landing. From there, we got on a speedboat. You can either take a speedboat or you can take a smaller boat. It takes either three hours or two hours. And on the way, as you can see, gorgeous scenery. You got birds, you have river otters, they got monkeys. It was really, really phenomenal. And now we're here at the Ubedi Eco Lodge here in Marikabai. The lodge has two self-contained rooms. It can house basically two couples, but you can camp as well coming here. And they've got a super exciting itinerary for us to enjoy today. Yeah, so right now we're gonna see cassava bread be made. We're gonna see tuma being made as well. And then also casserip, you know, the main ingredient for the pepper pot, the national dish of the country. And so we're starting, right? My friend here. What's up, man? How you doing? Gary. I'm doing great this morning. You're our guide for the next two days. Yes, and um, I will show you wrong. And the first uh, item on the list would be the processing of the cassava, making cassava bread, casserip, and as you mentioned, two more parts in this direction. And so it's this way? This way. All right, guys, so this is it. I love it. We're the only people here. <laughs> it's amazing, right? So, indigenous village, and here we go, cassava. So, to begin with, obviously, bringing the cassava from the farms. It's in this form here. And now she is actually taking the skin off of the cassava. It's a tuber. So, she's scraping the skin off. So, this is the scraping process, getting the skin off of the tuber. Very skillful. And the indigenous way of life. She's the adult, and you can see here, she has a very young one training very early. So the culture would not be lost. It's a pretty sharp knife for her, huh? <laughs> <sighs> Great thing, activity, we have to get the cassava clean. So using a brush with water, clean water, we wash the cassava. And now we're taking it to this wooden container here. In the Arabic language, the people call it Adisa. Adisa. So this is the greater with this very beautiful young woman here. She's grating the cassava, making it fine. She also is very skillful at this technique, doing it from since she was a child. I'm gonna try to grate it, right? Not so bad. I mean, if I do it all day, definitely gain some, some muscle here, right? Wow. And this here, she using this piece of material or equipment and it's called a matapi. A matapi? Yeah. It's a matapi and it would be extracting the juice from the cassava. And there she presses the matapi down to shorten it and she's filling it up. And the extraction of this juice using this matapi is done in a contracting technique. Oh yeah, so it's... She hangs the matapi up and there the matapi contracts and squeezes the substance inside grated cassava. In order to get more contraction, she's gonna add some weight through the loop, pushing the stick through, and then she sits on the on the stick. She sits on the stick. Yeah. You're amazing. So there she extracts the juice from the cassava, and there you see the matapi get it gets very fine. So they want me to sit on it. Let's see. I don't want to break it though. Don't, um, oh, look, look, look how it comes out. Wow. 
So the process is very simple, right? So they take off the skin of the cassava, they clean it, then they grate it. From there, they put it into this to extract all those juices. Now, why do they extract the juices? Okay, so this is a matapi, first of all. So they extract the juices because we're using the bitter cassava, so it has cyanide in it. So you extract all of the juices and it's left with the uh, grated cassava there. It's not fully dried, but it's almost. And this is what you use to make the cassava bread. The extracted juices is what you use to make like the kazu or the kada mm -hmm. to make the tuma and the pepper pot. And if you guys haven't had pepper pot, you haven't been to Guyana. <laughs> okay, so now she's gonna remove it. So here she would be taking it out from the matapi. Okay, she's gonna take it out. Oh. To make, in order to make the bread, it needs to be dry and in the powder form. So it still needs to be more dry. So we move to this here. This is the after coming out from the matapi. See, they take it. It take the form of the matapi. So this is what we call yuraha. It's put on on the shelf like this, over more um, heat using fire to get the excess moisture out of it. So first they extracted as much moisture as they could. Then they put it here, and it looks like it, it literally made the mold right. And they put a little bit of fire under it so that. It's rid of the moisture, so basically vaporizing it out, right? Yes. Getting rid of all the moisture. And once that's done, now we make the bread? No, we... we no. Since that is grated, uh -huh. yeah, so we have some slight large particles, so we have to use a sieve to, to sift it out. Okay. Right? So we want the uh, flour to be in a more consistent form or together. And there she using the sieve, and it's called a sifter. It's traditionally made. It's basically like a filter. Yeah. It's like so a, sieve. It's a sieve. A it's sieve? A sieve. Yeah. An indigenous sieve. So it gets all of the um, the lumps out of it. That's what it does. So it's it, it's not um, grainy oh, when you bake if, it. If you notice like this, you know the, the middle of the cassava tuber you have the bone. Mm -hmm. So it this this process gets rid of all that. Feels like Parmesan cheese. <laughs> yes, it really does, it does. The tawa guys, right here. Ready? And there she brings the flour and spreads it making it the shape of the towel using her hand she spreads it gently the towel has to be preheated if not the flow will not stick together compression and make it the bread too hard yeah because it'll be too tight we just have to wait a couple of minutes maybe one or two in order for the cassava to glue itself together before flipping it over on the pan to bake both sides after waiting a minute or two she is ready to flip the cassava so that both the other side could be could also be cooked. There we have a guest going and make a try. Oh, and you have to put the, the pan, make ensure that it goes well under. Okay. Hold yeah. here. Just rest your hand. Rest. Rest your hand here. Okay. And flip over. <laughs> oh, you did it. You did yeah. it like a pro. Oh my. <laughs> Awesome! All the way from Miami and Guyana, making cassava bread. Whoa. There you go! For the first day. <laughs> amazing, amazing! <laughs> Ooh, too hot, too hot! <laughs> oh my gosh! The fumes, man! <laughs> Here we have the cassava juice that has been freshly extracted. In order to get out the cyanide, a boiling process has to be taking place. Right? So, through that boiling process, this is where we may, we'll be making the cas rip. Keeps boiling till it turns the caramel color. When it drips out, it, it goes. And you have to be very careful because too much boiling, it can get burned. When it drips like this, this is when the cas rip is ready to take off. This is how you test it. What do you call this? So this uh, is a start for mother. Sorry, go ahead. She is now uh, <laughs> spreading Wait, on, cassava there to make small cassava bread. <laughs> and she will be making something called quinches. It's like salara. Does she have coconut colored and sweetened? And she's putting it on the cassava bread. It's like salara. So the coconut would be in the cassava. There she now folds it in order to secure the coconut inside, making the form of a semicircle. Basically, this is cassava coconut tacos. <coughs> I mean, just the way she did it, right? Kind of. It's the mold. Oh, put the fire. 
Instead of pull up, ready? Uh-huh. and then sides. Oh, Can we try this? Yes, yes, it's a demonstration. Scrape them off. Yes. Same extracted juice from the cassava used in the matapi. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we make cash rip. But in case you don't want to make cash rip, or you make cash rip and you want to save back some to make a tuma pot, you put some in a pot. And as was mentioned before again, boiling process eliminates the cyanide. We add a lot of pepper, and this is the wee wee pepper. Please. To give it some flavor, we add a different type of seasoning, salt, to give it a taste. With this juice here, you can either add any fish or meat, even chicken if you want. But we, we like it best with, with the local fish. Imiri especially and the Lokanani. In most cases this here just be going with the cassava bread. Oh she's going to uh to add the fish. This is the smoke. Smoke Imiri. Okay, so I'll put it myself too. Ooh. See David here is making his own lunch. I'm making tuma. Yeah. Tuma pot. Tuma pot. Tuma pot and we added some tuma, fish. Tuma. 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 Yeah, tuma. The pot is what? They, it's cooked in. It in. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, he said tuma pot. I said tuma. So what do you say? <laughs> what do you say, Peppa Pop? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're doing two different fishes on the tuma, right? Yeah. One of them was smoked. The other one's like almost cooked, but it finishes being cooked inside the pot, right? Yeah. Quinches. Quinches. Let's go. Indigenous you get the best chatry, the best quinches, then you get the best mm -hmm. tuma pot. Mm -hmm. tuma. Oh my God. Mm. Toasty, crispy, sweet. Savory. Oh, it's watery. amazing. Oh, so good. Oh, wow. I love the sweetness inside. Coconut. Mm -hmm. Nice crunch. Love it. Toasty. Yeah. I gotta have like 10 of these. You could have this with coffee, right? Mm hmm. Mm, lovely. It's still so warm. Oh, so fresh. Mm. More. Where are they? My friends, thank you so much. Right, thank you're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Amazing. You don't stop. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it for the making of the cassava bread, the tuma. Now we're going to have some tuma for lunch. And of course, kasarip. Kasarip. Yeah, tuma with kasarip and the cassava bread. And well, we'll be going with some locally made pine drink as well. Oh, amazing. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Lunch time. The Obadi Eco Lodge. It got its name Ubudi from this Ubudi tree standing right next to the left here. This tree is what the resort is named after, the Ubudi tree. Ubudi tree, massive tree. It reminds me of like a banyan tree. Huge tree. There you get some fresh ones. So what is this? Kukrit. I told you that when we go into the forest, luckily this one is nearby, but sometimes we got we be going like way into the forest to get it. And it's a fruit that the monkey loves a lot. So when, if they see us picking, they will jump on the branches and start shaking and try to scare us away. Careful. Oh my gosh. These are cockroaches. Now, there we have the cap. Looks like coconut in a way. And peel the skin. After peeling the skin, you scrape the seed, the, the flesh off the seed. Got it. I guess my turn, right? So you have to peel it, guys. And then you peel it. You can use your teeth or your fingers. And now you got the flesh, right? Not that much, though. It's a big seed in there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you have to eat mm. like the whole bowl to, mm. <laughs> to satisfy your needs. Yeah, for sure. It's a little sweet. It's good. And, and then when we're done, we just throw it. Yeah, it's okay. It's like just like it's okay because biodegradable. Very, 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 very nice. Well, I'll tell you, Ooh, those fun. little, what are they called, quinches? Mm -hmm. That just like opened up my appetite. Good, so oh, good. I can't wait. Tuma, it goes with cassava bread. This is emery. We don't have bone. This is the smoked emery. And this one, fresh emery that did not smoke. Just and fresh. It, uh, yes. And this, here we go. This is our pine drink. If you can see at the back, you can see the pine. Uh, Cone. So from there you get points and you make them your own beverage. Locally made. Wow, what a long morning, huh? Uh-huh. So it's time to eat. Yes. Yeah. So we have the two tumas. We have two different cassava breads. One's hard, one's soft. I like the softer one. Look at this, just breaks. Yes. Well, this, this is 
it's hard, but once you soak it in the uh, tuma, mm -hmm. it gets soft. So we'll soak it. Try that. Yeah, look how it absorbs it. Mm -hmm. So I'm having the hard one. Mine's soft. It absorbs really quick. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Extremely soft. Yeah. Oh, wow. The cassava juice. It's a little spicy. So first of all, we're having two different kinds of tuma. So this one here is made using the smoked imiri. And this one is the fresh imiri. You can taste the smokiness yeah. in the juice. So this is smoked about 80%. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, put into the tuma. It's pretty much cooked when it's in there. Describe like this. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. You taste the smokiness. Smoky. Very nice. Feels a little buttery too. I love the skin. The skin. Like I would just go like this, yeah. guys. Like best part. The best part. Best part of the smoked fish is the skin. Mmm. Oh wow. So what do you think about the um, cassava water? Mmm. The tuma flavors. It feels good. Mmm. Got some bones. Right now, there. This is what you gotta do. You gotta crush this pepper up, get the seed into the broth like this. Okay. And then you're gonna get the flavor. So crush. Yeah. Crush the we were. Take a bit of this fish. Okay, a little bit of the fish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Oh. Oh wow. See? Mm. Oh, I love it. Perfect. It's so unique, it's such a different flavor. I've never had yeah. cassava juice in my life. And the fish too is awesome. Mm -hmm. And they caught this fish fresh, right? This is no refrigerated frozen stuff. Fresh, farm to table fresh. And watch this guys, ready? Who's ready for it? Well, that is spicy. So I'm gonna try the other <laughs> one. Yes. I'm gonna try the fresh tuma. Let's go over there. So what's the- The fresh Iberi tuma. So this one isn't smoked. Let me get some of that. Mm -hmm. mm. Very buttery fish. Mm -hmm. Right? Really nice. I love it. Careful with the spines, right? Uh, the, the bones? Yeah. Mm. Big bones, but I'm going to soak this one up. I'm sure it's going to taste different. Still going to be a little spicy, right? Well, I had my uh, piece of cassava bread soaking up all these juices. So even mm -hmm. though it's hard to start with, it's now soft. Mmm. Oh, wow, this is incredible. This is good. The flavor is definitely different, even though it's the same fish. Obviously, this one is more smoky. Mm -hmm. This one is more buttery. Of course. I like the smokiness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't choose. I love both. So you pick this guy up. Look at this beautiful fish. Just open it. Just watch out for bones. Mm -hmm. Cassava bread. So we saw this. That's a hard one. We saw how this was being made earlier. So it makes it all the more sweeter when you get to eat it. <laughs> what a meal. I love this. What's amazing about where we are right now is that if you just close your eyes for a second, peace. Oh yeah. No noise pollution. Incredible. You can hear the birds in the background. You're surrounded by trees, so, fresh food. And they do a lot of bird watching in the area. It doesn't get better than this. Really it doesn't. Mmm, I'm missing one thing. <laughs> the juice. So we have this pineapple right here. Grown right here in Marakabai. Look at that. Massive pineapple. Man, that thing looks so juicy. Cheers. Oh wow, so fresh. Very refreshing, not too sweet. Not too sweet. Yeah, perfect. That's when you know it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> And that, my friends, is our morning here in Morakabai. So we started off in Georgetown, made our way. It took us around three hours. I love the journey in. Incredible experience just entering nature, right? Beautiful scenery along the way. Yeah. Yes, it was and gorgeous. The, and then we made it here? Yep. And we came to the Uberdi 
Eco Lodge, and that was the start of an amazing experience. Yeah. So we made cassava bread. We learned to make uh, tuma. We mm -hmm. learned to make kasrip. Uh, uh, quinches. Quinches, quinches, yes, yes quinches. quinches. <laughs> yes, we had the quinches. I mean, this is our like half day experience. We still have another half day, and tomorrow as well. We just really wanted to show you, you know, what goes into the food preparation here. How they make the amazing cassava bread. Personally, my favorite is a soft one. And mine is the hard one. Well, the quinches <laughs> is probably the best. Yeah, the, the quinches. quinches was definitely the best. We also had some fresh pineapple juice, mm -hmm. coconut fruit. Oh yeah. Oh, here oh, we go. Oh my gosh, oh, you're you spoiling Why us. would you do that? Dessert. Look at that. Okay, I'm taking oh, a bite, right? Yeah, of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuma, for me, the smoky one. For you, the other one, right? And for me, it's the fresh one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow, this is unreal. But this we agree on. Mm -hmm. Yes, our favorite thing here. My favorite dessert in the country so far, this one. Right? I second that. All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below and please come out here when you come to Guyana. Yes, definitely yes. come visit Marakabai. Marakabai, amazing. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from beautiful Morocco by Guyana. Today I'm going to take you to make some indigenous drinks here in the forest. We have three special drinks. Yes, three very special drinks. The first one is Paiwari, which is made from cassava. The other one is Fly, which is made from the purple potato. And the other one is Warup, which is made from cane. So you guys stay tuned, you're in for a treat. And then after we make the drinks, we're going over to the village. We're gonna go look for a paddle for myself. We're gonna see local life. And then after that, we got dinner. And if we're lucky today, we're gonna to try the Tacoma worm. It's a worm that comes from a tree. They open up the tree, they pull it out, and you eat it live. Stay tuned. So drinks over here. Stacy, you ready? Ready, of course. Are these alcoholic beverages? Yes, they are alcoholic. Oh. So um, that's even more special. We're gonna enjoy this, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I can't wait. Then over here, we're making some more cassava bread. No. No? Is no, that cassava? This is for the paiwari. Oh, that's the paiwari. Yes. yes, this is the paiwari cassava bread. This is the cassava after you finish wetting it and you sift it. Put it in a mojito pan to get brown. When it gets brown, this is this is this is how it goes. Okay. The nice paiwari cassava. Toasty. Yes. Look at that. Yes. It's hard. And after it gets brown, you 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 break it and then you add it to in the water. And you put it in the water and you soak it for one day and one night. You add some red cashew in it and then and sugar. And you left it for one day and one night to ferment. Then you strain off. When you strain it, it starts to ferment. So this is the paiwari. Oh, this is already done? This already finished. No, okay, okay, finished perfect. Product. All right, so this is fermented cassava. Start fermented because it starts to boil. Wow, so basically they use cassava for everything, right? Cassava bread, drink. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. A little bit of bitterness. That's why it reminds me of the mobby. Exactly. But it tastes so good. Ch chuck some ice in here. Perfect for a hot day in the forest, right? Yeah, this is like cassava wine basically, right? Uh, super light in alcohol, refreshing, especially a hot day like today. This is yes. satisfying. Very much so. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Thank you, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So how much alcohol is in here? Very little, right? Feels light. No, it's it's fermented, right? Yeah. No, I'm just saying like what well, percentage-wise is very low. How strong? How strong? How, how long it was the air standard? So basically, the longer it sits, the, the more, stronger it gets. Yes. Okay, so this one feels very light. I'd say like very like three percent or something. So we have potato that we'll be making fly with the potato wine. So we have the raw potato. We chip the potato in a pot and we boil it with just about two inches of water above the potato in the pot. After boiling it and the potato is mashed, then we let it stand or mix all together and it becomes in one with the water. So this is the product after and we'll strain it, strain out the husk or the remains from the potato and then we go into this form, the thin liquid form without any substrate. Basically what we're doing is that in order for the end product to come, we use six pounds of potato, raw potato that boiled six pounds to five gallons of water and we add six pounds of sugar 
let's stand for five to seven days and then it's alcohol so stacy you said it's smooth it's sweet let's see oh yeah i, I taste the fermentation right there mm, it's yeah, good though it's good really mm, nice potato drink and this is one of the drink that is preferred mostly but uh, I believe it's first priority. I love it, it's fresh. So it's like a, I would say it's like one of these nice berry drinks, right? That's what it tastes more like, the berry, right? Well, it's delicious, I love it. Stacy, cheers. Cheers. You like it, right? Awesome. I love this. Mm. Mm. Really, really nice, like I said, smooth. Smooth operator. It so like, you guys um, drink this at parties? Yeah. Okay, after the fermentation, we drink. Just like beer, you take a couple of shots and then yeah. you, if, if you don't know to dance, you get to dance floor after a couple of shots. After a couple. I mean, this one isn't that bad though in terms of alcohol, right, as well? Because it feels the fermentation. I feel it, but it's not like crazy. In uh, in Suriname, I tried like some, some rice beer and they let it sit for like a week. Same thing, it was like, but it was strong. How long did this one sit for? Five days? No, this, this is just... This is a young one. Yeah, this is a day. That's why I was saying, because you said five, seven, ten days, that's going to be strong. That's for the parties. Yeah, it all depends on how strong you want it. Maybe... Stronger the better, man. Stronger the better. One drink and that's it. We never tried, but... One month! One month! I was drunk before I know was like sitting for like a year. And it's only clear. Oh, I'm sure. She tried something that has been sitting there for a year, so it was extremely strong. So, Gary, what's next? Cane juice. Cane juice. So, we're having cane juice, which is wow up. Wow, up. Basically, we have this piece of equipment and it's a locally made equipment out of a tree trunk. We carve and we put a snipe here with, with veins running through so that cane juice could run through. The juice could run through into the container. The piece of equipment here is a name, it's Molo. 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 So this is how they extract the cane juice yeah. from the cane. From the cane. That's a, it's a pressing method. Yeah, it's a presser. Yeah. Okay, so, and over here we have a banana leaf, or what is it? This is going to wrap the bucket into this. Okay. So there we go, pressing. And you're cracking the, cracking the joints first. You don't press right down. Just crack each joint. Good. And you turn on the other side, and, and it goes. And down, down it. Hold it. Good. Just crack each joint. It's coming out, huh? So you twisted it? So I've had this in India, in lots of places around the world. I've never seen this machine, this presser. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very unique uh, presser, um, you know, handmade. Usually in India, you walk on the streets and they have this machine, and you put it through and then they keep putting it through. But there they add some lime. So they always add a little bit of lime to the sugar cane, but this is gonna be pure, right? Just pure sugar cane. I mean, I love it. So they you put it through, they twisted it, they turned it. Now he's like twisting it again. I mean, literally extracting all that juice. Oh, so good. Super sweet though. Lots of sugar. I've never seen this machine in my life, man. I'm ready. You guys ready for this? Easy as boy. Crack for us. Just quick, just quick cracks. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> easy for the beginners. <laughs> Oh, for the oh, yeah. I'm a man. Come on. Yes. And now we turn it. So they just keep cracking it. I hope you know this is appetizer. Eh? This is the appetizer. Yeah, you open your appetite. Exercise. For sure. <laughs> Not easy. Get for your finger. Yeah. <laughs> Almost had his finger in there, dude. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, just twist that up. Oh, no. No, no. Oh wow. More juice. More juice. Warm those arms. Warm Extract them. Extract it. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Wow. So now he's ringing it, right? He's twisting it up. Wow. What a process. And now that sugar cane is going to taste good, right? Finish. Finish. Okay, let's drink. So, what do you have here? Cane. It's just cane. cane. So here we have some cane. 
You want video sis? Yeah. You want video? There is sausages. Very good too. Mm hmm That's good. Warup is different from sugarcane juice because warup sits in a container for seven days and then it's been fermented, right? So it's an alcoholic sugarcane juice. All right, so let's try warup. Let's go. This cane juice has been left standing for seven days and now you're here to sample or to drink. It's warup, by the way. Thank you. Let's give it a try. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, yeah. He was telling us you, you do 10 days, you can do 7 days. The stronger you are, the longer you leave it. That's how drunk I was. <laughs> you were drunk off this? No, no, not off this. This is okay, this is smooth. This is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. Yeah. Are you ready for worms? Yeah, of course. Always ready for worms. Always. <laughs> And to be honest with you, I haven't eaten it like this, like raw, or like alive. Uh, I don't know, I'm a little nervous. It's, it's in there? It's in there. It's that's, in there? That's the trunk of the palm tree. Here we are at the harvesting of the Tukuma worm. But before we go into the actual harvesting from this trunk, I must let you know that this is an Ite palm tree trunk. So the Ite tree has been cut down with an axe. This here is the axe. So we cut down the Ite tree and leave it where we make wedges into the trunk of the tree a couple of places like about the axe length and we cover it with the ite leaf leave it for about four to six weeks then we assume that it's been producing um, the tukuma worms first thing you would do is to song because to get the song from inside because you would hear the hollowness of the trunk and sometimes he can even put his ears next to the trunk and hear them. So there he's quite sure, so you go into the splitting of the trunk. Oh, uh, I don't know if I want to eat that raw. <laughs> that looks so gross. I take it from the trunk and while in the back down, we don't really get a lot of things to prepare it. So if you're hungry, you can just help yourself to a quick snack. Crush the head first. And then weigh the body. It's slimy but satisfying. You know what? I'm here. I guess just take the head off. I can't take the head. No, you, you hold the head. Hold the head? Yeah. You hold it, Good, squeeze. Oh gosh, guys. It's actually very scary. One bite straight on the head. Right uh, below the head. In yeah? In case yeah. you swallow the head, you have to chew it. I don't want to touch this. And chew, don't swallow. I need something to flush that down. Are you what? You don't like it? I don't like it. I don't like it. I get it live. Oh, right here, right here, right here. In that hole. Look, he's pulling all of them out. How many we got? A lot. You trying it again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying it again. David, when you hold it, close your mouth and make sure it snaps before you chew with the head. Keep your mouth closed so that the, so the, grab the, here? the stuffing won't come out. I guess I'm just like. How do I grab it? Just grab it like this from the two sides. I guess it just, I don't even know how to do this. Oh, you ripped it off? He ripped the head off for me. Yeah, chew. 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 Mmm. Chew. Take it to you. It's too thick skin. The inside, you feel coconut, right? Mm hmm. That's wild. That's like a snack in the jungle, huh? It looks like we won't be getting enough. We get some more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see a bunch. Yeah, they're coming out. That's one way to eat it. Now we are going to uh, we we'll put it on some. Give me one. 
we just stick the, the worms on here and put over the fire to roast. All right, guys, so we're going to wash the worms. Get ready for the roast. So you're going to put it on a little stick, huh? Yeah. You hook it on the stick. You put more than one. Onto the fire. Ooh, popping. That one exploded already. Now that's what I call barbecue in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> we put three worms on a stick, put it in the fire. After a few minutes, they're roasty toasty. It's gonna be nice and crunchy. This is the way you should eat it. I suggest this is the way. So how much time do we need here? I gotta roast. It's not ready. I gotta roast for a little while? Yeah, let yeah. me cook. One of them exploded already. No, no, that, that was not from, I don't think that was in the fire. The one that I brought, I think it's... Oh, because when, when, yeah, when you punctured it? When you impaled it? Not me. <laughs> I was no part, taking part in none of that. Wow. Just an innocent bystander. You know, it reminds me of a Greek dish called kokoretsi, where they put all the organs on a stick and then they wrap it with intestines. Organs? Because as you can see, the, like, it looks like that. Oh. Like very round. Yeah, organs on a stick. We eat this, we could eat it with cassava bread. We could eat with rice, we could eat whatever you want, you could even just like that. Okay. So we just take it off, it's been roasted, and then you could make one eat or you could eat in part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my turn. Just pull this guy up, get him like this, and just go. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm, Really good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Coconut. Mm -hmm. Coconut. Very nice. You could add a little salt if you want. Yeah, I think the, the skin is a little easier to eat now. <laughs> Not as tough as before. But the inside, super gooey. The one thing you don't want is the head. So I'm having some You eat Now I'm going to try it fried. Oh, my favorite. Can I get a piece of the soft one? Mm hmm. Way better. Did you put a sauce mm. on it? Fries the best. Yeah, she did put some fries in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fries is the best. Uh -huh. okay. It's amazing. This one's a little bit. Put sauce on it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Alright, the Como worm is definitely a must try when you come here. You have to try it. I would recommend the fried one. The roast one's okay. The one where you're literally having it alive, not my favorite. Definitely not my favorite. Okay, well, we did it. We ate the worm. Now we're going to the village. I'm gonna find myself a paddle. I'm gonna find myself some souvenirs for my kids. I'm excited. My friend, no more worm. No more worm. No more worm. I'm done with the worm. You finished. I'm uh, finished. Eat all. <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit. I'm going to the village. Oh, you're going to the village? Yeah, just for a little bit. All right, here we go. Which boat? Same boat, right? Get on here. Amazing, love this boat. Oh, get my spot. Right here. All right. What are these guys doing up here? Chilling? Yeah, they're just chilling. Are they from here? No, uh, they just come to visit first time. First time, huh? How long is the the ride to the village? Like five minutes? No, it, it take about ten. Ten minutes? About ten minutes, eh? Fifteen. Ten to fifteen minutes. So it's gonna take us around fifteen minutes to get to the village. This is a small creek, right? So. We came on a big creek, then it turned into the smaller one. Yeah. Oh, wow. After a quick 15 minute ride, we're here. There we have the bridge, and over here is the village. Hey guys, how you doing? You good? That is built uh, a couple of months ago. Okay. Just to accommodate, like, you can do various things on, under it. It's just a bend up. Yeah, so we have a few guys chilling right there. They were telling me this is the weekend here. It's Sunday, they're relaxing, they're hearing some music. And this is the village, right? So I'm guessing this is like a school over here? No, this is a guest house. This is a guest house? Yeah. This is where the village accommodates guests. So if you want to come and spend, uh, let's say for a weekend. You can stay here. You can stay here, you could book a room. And over here we have the main park area, or recreational area, yeah, right? Recreation. People come here, they play soccer, they yeah. play lots of things, right? Volleyball. So, yeah, so we participate in three basic disciplines on this ground here. We participate in soccer, which is football, and we have cricket, as well as volleyball action. So as you notice around the ground, we have bleachers like this one here, we have one across the field, we have there. Uh, 
from time to time residents or the locals come out and we have a very good time. What we're doing now is uh, with some of these beautiful ladies here have crafts, so they want to get the crafts. They also have a few paddles, so they're going to bring it all so I can see. You know, I want to have something for myself, something for my kids, and uh, I hope it's cool. I hope it's nice. I'm sure it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's just the only size. It's the only size they got right now? Mm -hmm. oh, how big is this one? This is about three feet. Okay, so what's the price on this? Does anyone know? This will buy the yeah. one price. <laughs> 3,000. So 3,000 is something like 15 US dollars? Yeah, that would be it. Okay, so for 15 US dollars, I'm taking it, right? It's nice. I just got to stand down when I get home, put it on my wall. I have one from the Surinamese River, so this will go right next to it. So it'll be the little brother, though. <laughs> it's okay. Do you have some crafts here? So they got these earrings. They have this purse right here. Necklace, right? Beautiful necklace. Okay, and then you have this vase, right? Oh. Little vase. Which one? Which one you choose? Okay, so I'll take these, these two, and then this one. Blue. Yeah. So I'm taking three sets of earrings, a thousand each, plus the paddle, three thousand, which is about like thirty U.S. dollars. Um, and then you still have what else do you have over there? Just tissue. Tissue rack. Tissue rack, huh? All right. So you've got six thousand, right? Total. Here we go. Six thousand, guys. Ooh, do you have change? Anybody have change? No change? Okay, so I have five right now. Um, how do I get her change for this? Anybody have change? No? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye. So I guess I got what I came here for, right? Got the paddle. We actually commissioned the paddle from a guy. He's like, I'll make a paddle for you. I'll get it ready for tomorrow. He said it's going to be five feet. Five feet? Big paddle? Yeah, how am I going to take that? I have no idea. It's okay though. I'll get it to, to America for sure. Okay, so I guess we're gonna go back to the to the resort. We're gonna relax for a little bit, and then we're gonna have dinner. We're gonna have a special dinner, super special. Can't wait. How you doing, Jude? You going? Yes. You got a job? Yeah, you got a job. Why are you doing it? One Guyana. <laughs> Woo! Amazing. So this is the bridge, right? Yep. Beautiful, short bridge crosses the river. And this is where the tree fell. So the tree fell here, and that's why they call it Marokabai, right? So the heart of the Moroc tree. Wow, oh, looks incredible. The water right now? I love it. This is All right. future content. Is that content we're gonna use? At this time of the day, what do people do? Just relax, go in the water? Siesta time. Siesta time. <laughs> you don't have a nap here. You gotta grab the closest hammock, or you just gotta go in the black water and let that water cool you down. That's what you gotta do. Best water in the world. It's so good for you because it has tannins in the water. You know, you drink red wine. Uh -huh. They say red wine is good for you. Well, this water has the same tannins because of the rainforest foliage that falls into it. Oh, wow. So that's why it's, uh, the water is dark in color. So you can either go in the water, relax on a hammock. We still have about two and a half hours before dinner. I might just crash on a hammock. I'm tired. We woke up at 4, 4.45 this morning. Yep. My eyes are tired. All right, let's go. So we have a two hour break. You can either go to sleep or go in the creek. I'm taking a 90 minute nap. I'm tired. I'll see you at dinner. 90 minutes later, we are ready for dinner. We have some barbecue chicken. We have boiled and fried breadfruit. It's boiled and fried? Yeah, boiled yeah. and fried breadfruit. And which is this one, the tasso? That's tasso. the tasso. Tasso, which is like a beef dish, right? Yeah, and this is the farine. Farine, so this is uh, this is also cassava, correct? Yeah. Yeah, like a couscous kind of It's like a couscous, yeah. so it's a very grainy cassava dish, yeah, right? Correct. Amazing. Well, how do we eat this? I mean, do we mix? Is there something you pair together or? You can put the um, farine, put the beef with the gravy on it. The thing behind these two is that this is largely the cuisine of Rupununi, right. the time that you're going to. Yeah. Rupununi? Yes. So they eat this predominantly and tasso basically is sun-dried or preserved beef oh it's preserved yes beef. yes so it's like salted sort sort sun salted beef mm -hmm. um they use that there and then it's then converted so you can cook it you can fry it you can put it in stews it just goes back to the consistency of like normal beef well my friend i am ready yes i'm excited so good so you mix right 
Yes, so what you're having here is a representation of um, indigenous cuisine again, but this time from our Rupununi savannas, which is region nine. We're currently in region five. So in region nine, uh, they usually have like more of a roast culture. Mm -hmm. So the beef you're having is dried beef. It's, it's salted and dried in the sun, and we're having it stewed. Got right? it. So it's called tasso. Tasso. Yes. So it's dried and then stewed. Exactly, tasso, and we're having it with farine. Well, instead of baking it, they parch this. They parch this. Yes, the cassava greens, and this is the bitter cassava. Okay. Yes, so we're having golden farine and tasso. Golden farine. Yes. Bon appetit. Bon appetit, guys. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, I love it. Nice tender meat. Yeah. Mm hmm. The taste has been dried. Right, and the texture of the farine, as you know, you uh, we told you before, it's like couscous sort of like a mm -hmm. green. Yeah, in Italy we have something called paro. Yeah. Very similar. And um, a good rice substitute. Yeah, super healthy, right? And people people make farine in different ways. Everybody has their own way, but this is really nice and fluffy. Mm-hmm. Mm, combination is amazing. Very, very nice and fluffy. And what I did is I also grabbed some of that gravy and mixed mm -hmm. it in so it like soaks up into the, into the farine. Yeah. Tastes almost like chicken broth. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. Or beef broth. This is exactly what I needed. Wow, so good. <laughs> so lots of beef in Guyana. Oh yeah, we have our Rupanuni is famous, especially the south, for their ranches. Mm -hmm. So once you hit region nine, right, you're gonna the beef, best cattle. roast is it, chicken, beef. Oh wow, and we also have a little bit of that wee wee pepper. I'll taste it now. I think there's like little bits here and there, right? Yeah, and they got bits of veggies in here too. So this is almost like a fried rice. Mm -hmm. So they have like a little bit of carrots, sweet peppers. Yeah. I'll tell you, and this is a surprise for me because I haven't had this dish and it's amazing. I love it. It is, it is amazing. Farina and tasso. Mm. So what's our next uh Yes, next so dish? the next thing on the menu is uh, boil and fry breadfruit with barbecue chicken. So boil and fry is a big deal here. We boil and fry all kinds of different, um, as we call it, dry fruit food, right? Mm -hmm. We can boil and fry cassava, plantain, edos. Tonight it's breadfruit. So breadfruit bread is literally a fruit that mm -hmm. we harvest from a tree. Yep. And it has like a, it's called breadfruit because when you cut it, cut it up and you cook it it has like a a bread consistency yeah but it's a fruit but it's a fruit here we go mm -hmm. mm. almost feels like potatoes right yeah very similar to mm -hmm. potato same consistency but this is definitely a tastier but, yeah it's like a, 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 a like a sweet potato and um a potato or a sweet potato and an edo had a kid Mm -hmm. Right, because it has a, a little bit of sweetness there too. Mm. And next to it, we have the chicken, right? The barbecue. Barbecue. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, love the it. Sauce on here is really nice. Love the sauce. And the outside is crispy, but the inside of the chicken is very tender and okay, moist. So, mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. So the the barbecue it reminds me of like Carolina style sauces. Oh, it's it's like more like a glaze, not like too thick. Well, as I mentioned before, Region Nine, mm -hmm. which is being represented tonight, very big on roast. Okay. So once you land there in Rupununi, everything is roasted. Let them roasted, grills everywhere. You're gonna have roast chicken. Amazing. Look at that. a must. Lots of meat here. Get the rest of that barbecue sauce. And we have one more thing to show you. So we have lemon grass tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you call this like village tea. Or bush tea. Bush tea. Bush tea. It's literally like a grass. So some people call it fever grass as well. Mm -hmm. We're big believers in our bush tea here in Guyana. Right? So basically anything can be made into tea. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. It's perfect. 
Yeah. Oh, very Healthy. grassy and mm -hmm. lemon at the same time, right? Literally lemon, lemony flavor. Mm hmm. So, our sides today farine, boil and fried breadfruit, but we forgot the corn. <laughs> roasted corn. Roasted corn. The roasted theme, right? Yes, our theme is roasted, region 9 roasted. Here we go. Mm hmm. Mm. This corn is tiny. So this is literally just roasted corn, nothing else on it, and the flavors are popping. Mm -hmm. No butter, nothing. Oh, it's great. Mm -hmm. Super healthy. Mm -hmm. The entire meal was really, right? Mm -hmm. From the boiler fire breadfruit to the grilled chicken, the farine. Plus it's all organic. Exactly. From mm. the earth to the table. And we have dessert. Over here, we have a cassava pudding. David just bust from the main course straight to dessert. I had to. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> cassava bread pudding. Cassava bread. bread pudding. Cassava bread pudding. Cassava bread pudding. Yeah, this is gonna be definitely interesting. So this is kind of dense. Mm -hmm. Right, it's like a dense cake. Has cherries. Oh my god, I smell the vanilla. This is like mm. a corn. Oh yeah. Like a cassava cone. It's super dense. Yeah. But it's super nice. Very nice. Not too decadent, but you definitely feel that sugar. Mm hmm Oh yeah. Nice finish that meal like this. Mm. Nice really nice Love finish. It. The cherries, vanilla, great combination. Yeah. Really and all this made with cassava. A little bit gluey. Mm hmm and gummy, but really in a good way. Yeah, yeah. In a good way. Yeah, it's not one of these puddings which is like literally melting. Mm -hmm. This one's like condensed, it stays compact, right? Hey, Marika Bayo. So that was our afternoon experience. So we made drinks, we ate worms, basically a live worm, roasted worm, we fly, had fly, fly. We had paiwari. Paiwari. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. And then the water. For, uh, fermented cane. Yeah, I've never had that before in my life, and I've had sugar cane a lot of places, but this is something unique. So they ferment these drinks, you know, this is how they make their local alcohol, right? And then after that, I went to the village, I bought a paddle, bought some stuff for my kids, and then we had dinner. And I truly love the paro and the tasso. And the tasso. That was Farine amazing. And tasso. This feels more like a backyard, you know, barbecue style, you know, experience. This plate, the other one was more unique and different than I that I've had. Yeah. You know? But amazing. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We are exhausted. We've been up for I don't even know, 18 <laughs> hours right now. But if you did, please give us a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the morning right here. And we're gonna have bacon saltfish, right? Yep. I can't wait. Bush, Bush style. No God, who's coming over there? Good morning, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from beautiful Morocco by Guyana. Today it's a wet day. We're starting off really bright and early, seven in the morning, and we're gonna be making some traditional breakfast. And what is that? It's bake and salt fish. We're also gonna pair with some tapioca. Then after that, we're gonna explore the grounds, and we're gonna have a bush cook. So that's like lunch. So breakfast and lunch, back to back. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody good? Yeah. And over here we have the dough for the bake. Yes, that's right. You boil out the fish. So what fish is this? This is bangamiri. And then you strip it from the bone. Got it, so there's no bones in the no. in the fish. Well, you wash it right with the lime. The next step for this now, you're going to put it in the pot. And then you fry it up with your tomatoes, with your carrots. So you do like a blend. Is this yeah. a choka? It's like a choka. Like a choka, yeah. Like a choka. But you're frying it. Okay, so it's like a choka, you're frying it. So a choka is basically like a blend, right? Yes. Correct. And over here we have other ingredients. Garlic, this is the onion, this is the celery, this is the um, shallot. And then I'm preparing tapioca porridge. So now this is what's going in for the pot to boil. This is the tapioca. This make out of cassava starch that was grated yesterday. So this is another byproduct from the cassava. Yes, right? this is another byproduct from the cassava. And this is the fever grass tea. It boiled in there. This is for fever. If you have fever, you can drink it, and you can if you have a small child, a baby, and this fever is not going, you can boil it and bathe the child with it, put it for cold, 
and it helped take away the fever. So like a natural medicine? It's a medicine to the Capadola. Capadola? Yes. So what's the Capadola? From a tree root. From a tree root? Yes. So that's the lemongrass? Yeah. So do I eat it or just smell it? Yeah. Wow. Right here? Yeah, it smells like lemon. It's amazing. We had some of this uh, lemongrass tea yesterday. It was absolutely phenomenal and it's a natural medicine, right? Yeah, so this is the salt. Put the tomatoes in the pan. Put the tomato, onion, garlic, and then we got some celery, so some green onion. So now we're adding the fish. This is the beef that's going in this pond. That is the tasso beef. Tasso? Yeah. The dry beef. The salsa dry beef. The tasso, tasso. Tasso, what's some decorations? The sweet pepper, you put it in, into the pond. The black pepper, for, for flavor the pot. Mm-hmm. Ingredients. So what was that, some salt? Mm -hmm. That is a crab, some salt. Cube, you add two cubes and some salt here. Two cubes? Yeah. Mm hmm. Just keep moving it, right? Yeah. Oh. Fry this until it's golden. Yeah. Almost like a stir fry of fish. This carrot into the tasso, carrot going in, in, into any dish you cook. You also throw carrot? Yeah, carrots, one of my favorite veggies, so I accept it. <laughs> you can taste. We're gonna taste. Yeah, if you want salt, if you want anything else, you can't I guess it. I'll just try a little piece right here. Mmm. <gasps> oh, ah. oh, not too salty. No. Mmm. I love the fish. Very buttery. If you want more salt, I'll okay. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. So the tapioca is almost done. 15 minutes you bought it. Only 15 minutes? Yeah. It's okay then now. We're going to process to the um, big. So we're almost done with the salt fish, and next comes the bakes. So how do we cook the bake? We fry in the bake. So we're frying so the bake. add oil in the pan. This is really flattening it, huh? So now the salt fish is done, it's ready to eat. Now we have to make the bake, so we're going to fry it right here on this pan. So this is going to cook up really nicely. It reminds me of the Yapur in India. Oh, that's quick, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, it swells. You see, that is why they have it floats. Yeah. It's flowing now, yeah. Have to put another one in the pan. Okay, so this one's ready, right? This one's ready to eat. Okay. Take the fire, can you juke it a little before? And you hold it over the pan. So the oil can get to drain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prepare your your base and you put it inside here. And that's ready. It's my turn to roll it out, right? So you Rolling out the big. So. Oh, so nice. I think we need more flour, right? Yeah. Yep. Flip it. It's nice. It's really soothing. Doing this, looking out, seeing the rain. That rain kept me in bed today. I slept nine hours last night, guys. Well, I haven't really slept in years, so nine hours for me was like recovery. Uh, right here. Think it's good? I try my best. Yeah. And that's it. Breakfast is done. Now we're gonna go right under our big house, and that's where we're having breakfast. We have some lovely fiery yuri peppers. Your favorite, I believe. It's all for me? Yes. You remember yesterday when you were dunking these? So we thought, what best than to put some of these on the table for you? Which is hotter, orange or red? Ah, I think it's the red ones. Oh, she's saying red, let's go red. <coughs> That's really hot. Mmm. But nice. Mm. Good burst. Mm. Lots of seeds. That's where the spice is. Mm -hmm. mm. And everything here has wiri? No. The peppers you should kept separate in some cases because you know some people may not be able to take the heat of it. Mm -hmm. But most Guyanese will tell you that the meal is incomplete without some pepper. And it can be in this form, it can be grinded. In the Rupununi they do a 
dry version so there's so many parts of it but Guyanese love pepper pepper yes so what's the name of the the vine here that I'm trying Capadula in general is the vine or just say so Capadula, Capadula. Just Capadula. Say Capadula. Yeah. the Capadula yeah. so this is the vine mmm it's good so this is really good for health right you usually use the Capadula as a medicinal for a medicinal purpose rather um, it helps it when you have back aches um, you could strain a muscle in your back it, it helps with that it depends how you want to do it usually <clears throat> what we do we kind of open the bake uh -huh. and then we put the sawfish inside in the middle as a filling and then sandwich take a nice bite yes so you gotta do it like this right yeah but yeah, don't separate it all the way no, in the no, no, no. The top. oh they're talking about this yeah. you open a hole right, right. Pocket. You see one that's okay, so you're making a sandwich. Yes. So bring it up like that. Yeah. That's good. This is a different pepper. This is a pepper sauce. So generally, what we would do, we would put the bake, the sawfish in the bake, and then take some droplets of the pepper onto the sawfish, and that puts the pepper e effect into it. So I'm gonna stuff it, right? Okay, here we go. Bacon sawfish. Mmm, fluffy, a little flaky, mmm, very light on oil, I love the inside, so it's a mix of fish, got some different um, vegetables in there, you got some onion, forgot what else, carrot she threw in there, right? Yeah, shallows. Mmm. So I'm having mine a little bit different, so I'm not going to put it, put mine as a filling, I like to break my bread, <laughs> so to speak, and dive in. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Gotta get some pepper. The hard ones. Yeah, that spicy. I haven't tasted this this pepper sauce yet, so not sure the heat level. Perfect. Not too hot. Beautiful flavor. Love it. So as Stacy was talking, I was busy applying my pepper too. So I'm gonna take my first bite. Mm. 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 Really good bake. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is a traditional Chinese breakfast. This is traditional. Yes. Yeah. Bacon saltfish. This is the most traditional, right? Yes. I mean, this is like number one. Let's try. So just like this, right? Uh, you, can, you can open it. I believe this. You think it has more heat? I'll be the judge of that. Mm -hmm. There's heat here, but with the combination, this doesn't hit you that bad, right? I love the bake. So fluffy. Mmm. And mm, the saltfish is not too salty. It's not. So Pretty enjoyable. It's just right. Not too salty. And you fry it up nicely with all the flavorings. Mm -hmm. This here could actually work as a dessert or as a snack as well. The avocado or pear, as we locally know it as. You call it pear? Yeah, we call it pear. And it goes with the cassava, mostly. So to add a little flavor to the pear, you can also sprinkle a little salt on it to get it, just bring up the flavor a little. Here's how we eat it with the pear. So you scoop, take the cassava mm -hmm. as it's stiff and we scoop, okay. have the combination. Mm. What a great combination. In America, we have something called avocado toast. This is avocado cassava toast. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you just spread, right? Yeah. You make it a spread. Almost like guacamole, right? You take it out, you make it like... Mm -hmm. I still personally like the soft cassava. Mm. Just in case you're using the soft cassava, you won't be able to scoop the You won't be able to mm. soup. I know. So you're, then you'll definitely have to use the I, I guess yeah. the softer one is better for uh, soaking up any of the... Yeah, but, but in case you... It could That's go with the avocado as well. Mm -hmm. But you need the spoon to just scoop the avocado and get it on there. So this is tapioca porridge. This is made as another from another byproduct of the cassava, the bitter cassava that we would have processed yesterday. It's very popular in the Rupununi so you take the grains and you turn it into porridge fun fact about the Rupununi they make nearly everything into a porridge yeah there's yam there's pumpkin um, there's mango and the list goes on everything but this you porridge. have this for breakfast you can add sugar you can add milk and in your case we won't be adding any milk tapioca porridge 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it, it almost feels like a jelly, this one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because it's pearls. It's tapioca pearls. Tapioca pearls. You okay? So if you have bubble tea, this is like the smaller version, right? It's tiny, tiny pearls. Mm. At the end, just drink. It's definitely filling. And we cannot leave the rest of the salt fish. Stacey, you want or you're good? No, I'm good. You good? I'm gonna stack mine. This is a big boy baking salt fish. Like that. How beautiful this is. Mm -hmm. So big and selfish, we can find it everywhere in the country, right? Pretty much, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, this reminds me the most of a puri in India. Wow. It's almost the same. There's a little crispier, mm -hmm. less doughy. Mm -hmm. But the same process. They put it into the fire, I mean the oil, mm -hmm. you know, on a big pan. Usually it's a huge pan, uh -huh. like a hundred of them, you know? Yeah. Mm hmm Mm. That big will fill you up though. So once we're done with breakfast, we have some lemongrass to wash all down. This is lemongrass tea. This is phenomenal. Super good. It's medicinal. It's really good for your health, right? Mm. So good. It's amazing there's no actual lemon in this. It's pure grass. And next to us, we have dessert. Nice, fresh pineapple. Mmm. Whoa. Guyana has the best pineapples. Let me tell you hands down, right? I think so. This is a fact. Best pineapples in the world, Guyana. This is everybody I've spoken to, especially uh, in areas like this, where it's grown organically and in the Pomeroon. Best, best Lake Mainstay. Best pineapples ever. Mm -hmm. Juicy. So juicy. So much moisture. Wow. And it's like vibrating. The variety of pineapple that is here presently that you're eating is the cheese pineapple. Other species, like the indigenous people, they would classify them differently as tiger head, patwa pine. Just uh, the way it looks, right? Bush cow head. They have their traditional name. Now that we're done with breakfast, we're gonna go on a mini hike to see if we can see some birds, maybe some monkeys, hopefully some reptiles. We'll see, right? It's always hit or miss with wildlife. They have a nice trail over here to the right. So we're gonna go down, it's gonna be like a half hour walk. We'll come back, relax for a little bit more, and then we're gonna have a bush cook. We're gonna make one more dish for lunch. All right. The, the camp, it was originally designed as was used yesterday to do cassava processing. This trail is developed as earlier as we mentioned, the makeshift camp or the bush camp as some would say, it was developed to do cassava, or made to do cassava processing there. We made a trail, it's just in some bushes around the lodge so you can actually see nature to it best, absorb, um, have a look at the f different kind of flora and if you're extremely lucky, maybe a fauna or any animal, right? So we have different trees and, and different purpose of these, these bushes around, like, like this here, this is the kukrit. The, the leaves is used to make the thatch roof of this, these bush camps, right? And even this, look at this here. Here we have kapadula. The tea that we drank this morning that's good for your back. You know, like they say if you if you think that you lose too much of children, you know you build them back. So we just came from this trail. As you can see, it goes in a big circle, and right there we have the lodge. And then if you go this way, you go straight to the savannah, and then through that savannah area you get to the village. <sighs> nice. And what I like about this is not the, too many mosquitoes. Obviously very wet. It rained for like nine hours literally the whole night plus a little bit of the morning it's beautiful here i mean all you're hearing is nature right and if you want to you guys can go bird watching of course it's another thing they offer you can do that early morning i'm not really a bird watcher so i'll skip that activity but i'm sure a lot of you guys like bird watching so you come here for that where are you going the matter period the mat that the females used yesterday to extract the juice from the cassava, the grated cassava. That piece of equipment is made from this. And what this is, is the name? Mokro. The name of this plant or this mokro. It's be much more long, like you know. Yeah. Long as the matapi or even longer. 
Let me cut it. Let me boss it. It usually happens with a knife. So we boss it in half. Then we boss it again. You notice there's a this is white inside or the flesh or the meat that we would say. So you hold it like this. Usually we put a piece of cloth, but presently right now we don't have a cloth and Now this part here, this is what we use to do the knitting. Is it? It's green in color, but when it's quail and gets old, it turns brown. So this is actually the thing that making the you weave into the yeah you weave. This is mm -hmm. actually the, the material that you weave. Yeah. And right here we made it to the savanna. So if you guys don't know the difference, savanna is just like open field grassland. Over here we have the forest, lots of trees, a lot more animals over there, right? This trail is leading to the village, the trail on the left. And this one here is leading into the back down. You know, the loggers go and so forth. Okay. Like got, deers. You guys got wild hogs so here? Not no. sometimes from time to time, but it takes like yeah. one in every three years to... Yeah, this oh, wow. one here is just mainly deer you would so find in this savanna. Boxes and foxes yeah deer and savanna fox and um you could find the aguti or akuri the red rabbit the rabbit there. oh yes get aguti here yeah. all right yeah and this is the end of our you know little walk we're gonna go back now and go for lunch yeah so along this trail you won't really see a lot of animals mainly because people traverse it every yeah. single day as well as we have motorcycles and tractors you know it's kind of noise mm -hmm. but they're out there just scared to come and come closer yeah I love this, guys. It is so peaceful, so relaxing. If you just stand still for a second, what do you hear? Just birds and insects. The red foot and the yellow foot tortoise are here, but to see that, you literally have to go in and start pulling out the bushes. Really impossible. That's really what I wanted to see, though. Well, David, here we are, back at the lodge after the small hiking. All right, so we have about a half hour. Relax. I'm gonna hang out in the hammock right now. Whew. Damn, it got hot, huh? Sun came out. Take off my shoes. Oh, go to sleep, huh? All right, nap is over. Let's go make some food. I just crossed for about 30 minutes on this hammock. Oof, I feel great, I feel alive. All right, bush cook. Like that? And there you have the water inside. Wow, who's that for? You can drink this. Yeah? Yeah. It's amazing, look at that. Look how much there is. This is an amazing coconut. <laughs> I love this one. So in order to get the coconut to utilize it to make the cook up today, we'll have to get it in a more finer form. You have to grate it out of this shell using the sit down grater. The sit down grater. It have what we call teeth or sharp edges that will be converting the nut into this form. Okay. And here we're using a scraping technique starting from the outer circle mm -hmm. of the coconut while we work toward going inwards and the next thing while doing it after every grate or scrape or whatever you want to say you make a turn like this and we turn the coconut turn again easy access and that's it that's it the next thing we have to do is we have to add water yeah it's like a washing process so we're gonna wash this out wash the milk out of it got it yeah and then that goes in with the rice and then we throw the milk into the rice and, and then we gotta cook up. cook up along with peas and other ingredients amazing so we're gonna do the cook up rice right here right so we're gonna start a fire now okay just This is a karahi, karahi cooking pot and this is where the cook up magic is gonna happen. So it's called karahi. Kahari. A kahari karahi. Karahi. 
call it different things. Okay. So it took us about 15 minutes to get this fire started, but now it's going and we're getting ready, right? Just cooking up or heating up the pot. As soon as that's ready, throw everything in. A squeeze in the coconut. Okay, you squeeze it. Yeah, let the cream come out more. Forget the cream. So you just added water? Yeah, add water. And that was it? Yeah. So they're making the coconut milk. Yeah. So gonna squeeze it a number of times until it's as creamy as possible, then she's gonna strain it. And that's what we're gonna use. All right, so what are you doing next? This is, um, local green seeds that we made with onion, garlic, shallot that we blend together. This is the cube, the mash it. You can put a little bit of um, pepper. I must in every cooker. We gotta put our pepper and when it's crisp and boiled, it just bursts and all that delicious flavor comes out into the rice. Right. This is the black pepper, you add the flavor of the pot. It is a cook up so you don't use and a bush cook. Now you train this is the um, the red peas. into the rice giving it that rich cup of flavor that we all know and love. See oh, pepper and the onion that we can circle. That is the celery. You leave it to boil and simmer. So it's a simmer? Yeah. Okay so Mary so what where are we at now in the process? I mean we've added all the ingredients? Yes all the ingredients are. And now it just simmers for how long? When it dry right down simmer down. So after dry, all the milk, all this water have to buy it off. Okay. Yes. Well, guys, you can see black eyed peas. You have pieces of beef in there. The weary weary. And this is too hot. Okay, <laughs> let's get out of here. All right, I'm so hot that I have to pour water over my head. Oh, it's ice cold from the river. Oh. Oh. All right. I'm alive now. <laughs> My gosh, I was, I was melting. Yeah, so now we're just waiting for this to simmer down, right? It's intense. The heat with the sun, I'm just swelting right now. It smells so good, that aroma, we worry. Coconut, that's my favorite part about this. Coconut, rice, cook up. This is the hachibana, or the wild plant in leaf, and we're gonna be using it as a tablecloth today. And we'll be serving our meal on it too. I guess first time I ever see that. Pot the table, literally pot on the table. This is really amazing. We're gonna be serving the cook up onto a plant in leaf, right? That's right. Plant in, all right, here we go. Put the fried fish. Very nice. Oh no. Put some. Mm-hmm. Cucumber on the side. Okay, so we're almost ready. So what do we have there? We have some lime juice. Lime juice. So I think Guyana, when somebody says swank, this is what they mean. Swank. Lime juice. Yes. Good for the humidity and a good way to combat the cook up. Mmm, it's nice. Almost like a nice tea. Yes. Yes, I'm ready. Cook up rice. Cook up. You have your pepper there on the side. Mm -hmm. Also good to accompany it. Get some beef. So, here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And the difference with this is that having it cook over the fireside, mm -hmm. you get that nice taste. It should be different than if you cooked it on the, on the regular stove, yeah, gas stove. A little bit more smoky, right? Yes. And then you also have, mmm, 
The coconut. Yeah. It's amazing. The key is the coconut. Putting enough coconut so you can put do a big pot and do limit yourself. No, you have to put a lot around, right. right? Oh man, the beef, super mm -hmm. tender too. Mmm. And everybody cooks cook up in different ways. So there's some people who don't eat beef and so they will substitute with chicken. Mm -hmm. But for those who eat almost everything, you have beef, you have salted beef, you have pigtail, Got tripe. It. There's so many things. So this, this cook up, this pot can be a creation all of your own. Here on the left we have uh, fish. Mm -hmm. So this is a fried fish. What fish is this? This is trout. This is trout? Yes. So with trout you got the spine here, right? Yes. Take that in out. The middle. And you can go in here. Look at that. Yes. Mm -hmm. and some people like ketchup. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. Um, mm. You can add pepper. You can use achar with this. Mm -hmm. Have you tasted achar before? I love achar. Okay, achar, achar also is, is a good, good accompaniment to it. So I know you've been popping a lot of peppers recently. Yeah, you know I'll pop another one. Is that <laughs> what you wanted me to do? Is that what you wanted me to do? Everybody wants to know you're gonna carry down all these peppers <laughs> inside my organs. <laughs> oh wow, mm. that was another spicy one. Mm -hmm. mm. Really good. Amazing. Really good. Well, you know the locals will say after this, you've had cook up. You've had some swung. Mm -hmm. That's a recipe for you know what? Deep sleep. <laughs> deep sleep. <laughs> deep sleep. I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> no. Mmm. Yes. Oh, the meat. Mm. Really well so done. So tender. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What's amazing is that everything here is organic. Yes. From the land, right? Yes. One of the things that we really focus on in destinations is making sure that they utilize all the produce from the communities in their foods mm -hmm. as much as possible and if not found in their communities at least it's found in georgetown or somewhere close to them so still works just it's as Guyanese. well yes this is so refreshing swank mm -hmm. you said so, swank swank swank, yes. swank. Mm. not swank swank and we also have an amazing dessert Cassava cheesecake. I cannot wait to try that. Mm. But let me enjoy this meal. Sure. Congratulations. Mary, where is she? Mary, love it. So good. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Phenomenal meal. So, this is not a Guyanese meal, Lawson. Peppa, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, gotta add some pepper. A little bit. Ooh, pepper is all about your tolerance level. How yeah. much can you take? And right now I'm coming out with my own hot sauce, so that's Ooh. gonna be my. So well, cool. it's not gonna be this hot though. Okay. I, I'm trying to trying to get the masses, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the same challenge with us as Guyanese. You know, mm -hmm. we're accustomed to having food well seasoned, mm -hmm. a lot of the flavors or pepper. So mm -hmm. when we go to other countries and you know, it's a bit less seasoned yeah of course we pick up on that instantly i mean in america a lot of things are very bland so for me it's like mm -hmm. always having at least either black pepper mm -hmm. or having some other spice some okay. other peppers yeah i think it's too much it's amazing food i guess because they were serving in a leaf one part your your portion size you know they can really determine mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a big portion size yeah. the size is massive Ooh, here's a fun fact about cook up cook up is actually a traditional dish also that's served on old year's night or the eve of the last day of the year and everybody's home has a pot of cook up in it traditionally we use pigeon peas black eye red bean whatever kind of cook up you like but it's definitely a tradition on old years this is cassava cheesecake this is it made with milk with the cassava bread i chip it up in the milk I put my um, nutmeg, I put my essence, I put two eggs, and then I grate cheese over it, and I put it in the oven to bake this cassava cheesecake. Local cassava cheesecake. I'm excited, cassava cheesecake? Well, I can tell you this is my first time having this. I'm Me too. very curious to see what's, what's happening here. Let's do it. Okay. Mmm. 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 Oh, very nice. 
Mm-hmm. It's like a, a pudding, a, like a bread and butter pudding consistency. Feels and like you're cu- tasting the, the essence. Mm-hmm. Feels like custard. Yes, yeah, custard. Mm-hmm. And then we have some, I think there's a cherry mm-hmm. inside as well. Yeah, like there's a lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. All right. Oh, that was good. Mm. No more. Mm. My belly is. Between the cook up, the swung, and this. Oh man. I know. We've, we've had a culinary feast for lunch. I think we can move after this. Yeah, we have to get going. <laughs> uh, so we are a little behind. So we're now going to get onto the boat and then go straight out about two hours. Yes. I'm excited. Hopefully, we see some monkeys. Yeah. Our, and our national bird, the Watson. So we'll keep our eyes peeled. Let's see what adventures the river has for us. Perfect. All right, let's go. Great. You made me a necklace. Come again. This is come back tomorrow. Come back again. Come back tomorrow. That's what it does, huh? I like it. Look good. So what is this? I'm going to say that in This is a headdress. A headdress. Look like a full nomad. It's amazing. Well, that was extremely kind of them. Look at this. Got a headpiece, got the necklace. He said this ensures that I come back. Hopefully one day. One day. All right, let's get on the boat and let's go. We still have a two hour journey straight up to the car, right? So hopefully we see some birds and some monkeys. Wow, this man gets so much tree, you know? You good? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. We're going to rest now. Yeah. From the resort to the village takes around 15 minutes on this small boat through this very shallow creek. Lots of trees. We have to go really, really slow because it does go in like like left, right. I mean, lots of different oak and then lots of trees like this. It's you, all right? Uh, very small boat, small engine, so it takes a little bit of time. It's very peaceful here, very relaxing. Unfortunately, no animals because the boats go up and down here, the animals scatter into other creeks, right? So the black water? Look how dark this water is. Black water. I know, it's clear there, but... Gotta be careful, anaconda, huh? Huh? Anaconda? Uh-huh. And black diamonds. Woo! It's starting to rain. It's the hardest part about being in the rainforest. It rains a lot. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Yeah, we're about to switch boats right now. Captain! Yep. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. All right, here we go. Two hours. Let's go. We made it. Yeah. Here we go. Captain, yes. thank you so much. Woo! That's it. Yeah. Oh man, thank you so much. Thank you. You're That's Marakabai. What an experience. Today was what? Bacon and salt fish. Bacon salt fish. We had uh, oh cook so up. I know we ate too much food today. <laughs> but that was the experience. We spent over 36 hours here. What an incredible spot. If you're ever in Guyana, definitely come out here. It takes around four hours to get here from Georgetown. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Just give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you in the next one somewhere in Guyana. Let's go.